Hola, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, yo también. Today I would like to share with you eight tips to improve your Spanish. So eight tips that I think are very important for you to improve and increase your knowledge of Spanish. I want to do I want to do this lesson fast and easy. It's like really simple, practical eight tips and I want to do it fast. So, you know, because they are simple tips, you should be able to get them fast. So, let's start with the first one. Muy bien. The most important part that I want you to remember when uh, you're speaking Spanish is the vowels. The vowels are very important in Spanish and they are important and they are very easy to, to learn because we only have five vowels, A, E, I, O, U, and we only have five sounds. It's not like in English that so you have tons of vowels and tons of sounds like uh, 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 and like all these uh, it's not an I, it's, a, it's not an E, it's an uh. And like, oh, all right. Uh. So in Spanish, it should be very easy for you that is only A, E, I, O, U. El burro sabe más que tú. Now, we have three vowels that are, call them open vowels. A, wide open. Because my mouth is very open and your mouth should be very open to A, E, O. A, E, O. They get open and short. A, E, O. A, E, O are open vowels. A, E. Do you see the difference? A, E. A, E. A, E, O. A, E, O. Now, the long vowels and closed vowels. Cerradas and long. Yes, they are long. And closed. E, E. It requires a longer sound. E. So if you were saying E, E, right? And U, as if you were saying U, right? These are long. These are short. Yes, so I think you should be able to say, okay, E, U. So if I say, yo vivo, yo vivo, you sound like, I say, yo vivo en Cuernavaca. It's as if I were saying yo vi bo, vi bo, yo vi bo, because the I is the the I is a long. O yo busco, I search or I find. Yo busco, bus is like as if you were saying busco with H. Busco, bus. Busco. Yo busco. So you see, this is a long. So long, short. Muy bien. Big, small. Open, closed. A, E, O. I, U. I, U. It seems like, you know, well, like the monkey that you take the hand inside and you're like, mm -hmm. Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Bien, ¿y tú? Like that, you remember that. Se llama oh, Merolico, no se llama. Ah, I forgot the name. Pero es el, el chango ese que le metes la mano y habla. So, these are those vowels for that chango, for that monkey. E, U, E, U. Yeah, I'm not even opening my mouth. A, E, O. E, U, E, U. <laughs> See? You almost like very close. Uh, anyway, forget it. So, yes, five vowels, five signs. Five sounds. Three big. Short, two, um, two long, and three, <laughs> three big, and short, two long, and small, and closed. Muy bien. Seguimos. One of the mistakes you make when you speak Spanish is when you say a word that ends with O, you tend to do the O. O. So, for example, claro. You would say claro, like adding a W sound or a kind of a U sound that is not needed. When we say, when we have a, 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 a word, una palabra that ends with O, it ends with O. That's it. O, claro, claro, por supuesto. O, that's it. For example, the wall. If you're living 
close to where they are building the wall, you'll say el muro, el muro. You won't say mur muro, no u, like not the double u sound at the end. Just try to say, if it ends with o, it ends with o. It's not an o as it is in English that you tend to do like o at the end of certain words that end with o. This is claro, por supuesto, te veo, o. Simple as that, o. Think about, think about my face saying, oh, oh, oh. When I'm in the horse, I say, oh, 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 oh. I want him to stop. So I say, oh, oh, oh. And I make him stop en, en el caballo, en, en mi caballo que algún día voy a tener. Muy bien. The other one, before, I'm going to leave this to the end, okay? That's what I am put a number. I'm going to leave this to the end. La otra es la B y la V. Many of you have asked me, uh, is the V and B? No. Just remember, it is the same thing. You can say in Spanish, B and B. Now, sometimes you probably hear a difference because it depends on the speed of the speaker and the vowels or consonants around these sounds. So, for example, por ejemplo, cuando hay una N, like convencer, convince you, the N before the B, the V, makes you soften the next sound. Con, so you cannot go from con to b, convencer, right? It would sound too, uh, too strong, too, uh, too harsh. Convencer is like where you're putting your muscles, it's already giving you a, a, an introduction that you're going to kind of soften the next sound, convencer. So yes, sometimes this sound softens depending on what other consonant or vowel is next to it. But just think that it is the same sound and think that it's not really the most important part. So if you just remember that it's the same sound, you struggle less because you stop thinking about the English sounds. The Spanish sounds, it doesn't have a difference by the book. Saying it, the speed, the country where the speaker is, for example, like Dominican, they speak super fast, right? And it's hard. So you'll see that even the other sounds are not being pronounced very sharp as other native speakers speak. So just take that into account. By the book is the same sound. By hearing, you say, oh, but you're pronouncing, yes, they might be pronouncing V or B, but it's not, there is no such difference. Very well. Now, the H, the H in Spanish is mute, doesn't have a sound, except when it's a word that is not really uh, from, uh, from the Spanish language. So Hawaii or haiku or hamster, all those, you say, oh, si, sí, el hamster. But really, sometimes we say, as we're saying like this, Hawaii, Hawaii, because that's the, that's our H, um, uh, H sound in Spanish, Hawaii. Hmm? Jose, for example, Jose, right? Jose se escribe así, but we don't say Jose, we say Jose. So yes, when you have the H, the H doesn't have a sound, we call him la H muda, porque no tiene sonido, es muda, no habla, doesn't talk, doesn't speak. So you say Hawaii, Jose, Jesus, etc., hamster. Um, so yeah, like if, it, if it's written with H, doesn't have a sound. Remember that, it's very important. Very important, muy importante. Many of you, um, because in English, sometimes when you say the stars or stereo or uh, what's the word I was going to, I forgot the word. I was going to give you a very good example that I kept in my brain and I forgot it. That's bad for not writing it on the board. So you say, estar, you have to say the E. I know there's a next, next, next to it. And a lot of your, the words in English, you would say star or try not to say the E where the word starts. But in Spanish, all the sounds, except the H in most instances, have a sound. It's a phonetic language. So all the letters you see there 
are going to be pronounced. Estar, estar. Escándalo. We don't say scandalo. We don't start with That's actually very uh, gang like la regaste, se la regaste. Like, oh, that's bad. That's bad, right? So we don't say it like that. We say e eh, with the e. Eh, start, e eh, start. We say you will see it. With Hispanics who speak English, they probably tend to add an e to the words that start with s, and that's because we think it, there is an e. Like uh, uh, the, the the stars. Oh, I really like the stars. Something like that. Start. Escándalo. Estéreo. Before I learned English, my friend Alison used to correct me all the time. No se dice stereo, se dice stereo. So, sí, sí. But uh, in general, you shouldn't do that. Like you should pronounce the E if there is an E. Usually, very generally, words, words don't want, if it starts with S and another consonant, for sure you'll have a vowel before because we really don't have words that start with two consonants. There, there are cases, but it's not generally common in, in Spanish. So you'll probably have an E or another vowel before an ST or SP or whatever, like two vowels together. Many of you, the next one is many of you, muchos, dicen no comprendo or no comprende, right? No comprendo is I don't comprehend, I don't understand. But many of you also say no comprende, but you really say you mean yo no comprendo, but you are saying he or she or you forma usted, él, ella, usted. So you're talking about yourself in third person. No comprende, no comprende, you say. You say no comprendo, you mean, but Generally, we say, no entiendo. See, I didn't write it because I wanted to write it when I was telling you. So it says, no entiendo. So instead of no comprendo, which is very, ah, very kind of philosophical, philosophical, like, oh, I do not comprehend. Say, so, no entiendo, I don't understand. No entiendo. Remember the long vowel and the short vowel, entiendo, no entiendo. So you're not gonna say no comprendo anymore because you already know when you don't understand something, you say no entiendo. Now, when you, when you want to uh, be nice to a person you know, it's so like, oh yeah, I understand you. Tu se te entiendo, uh, but you can also say te comprendo if you're trying to express that care for that person. Te comprendo, te entiendo. But generally, when you actually see something, you, somebody is explaining to you something, you say, no entiendo, see? ¿Sí? No entiendo. You see, you have a lot of problems with the vowels maybe, but if you see now that the I and the U is long, that's gonna help you to actually, when you see a word, you think of a word that has this long and short, to try to make it long. No entiendo, no entiendo. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Now, the next one. Uh, choo -choo. Pa. Many of you are, get confused because they say, people are. So, my English teacher is like, people are, people are very annoying. And so I say, ah, ah, ah. And he was trying to say are, right? But I was, I had learned, mm, English from the US and Canada. And I didn't know that in England they say, oh, people are. Oh. I didn't know at the time. En ese tiempo, no sabía. Era muy ignorante. No sabía nada de la vida. I didn't know anything about life. No sabía nada de la vida. So, we, people in Spanish is a singular. So, we don't say la gente son. Es la gente es. Es singular because it's a group of people. A mass in a group, there's no wisdom in the mass. So you say, la gente es, en español, es singular. You, we don't say la gente son. No, 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 no. Me enojo. 
I get so upset, me enojo, y cuando me enojo, when I get upset, oh, you should see me, take my chicote, y les doy unos bien buenos, ¿sí? La gente es, now, you feel the need that you need something plural, because you like plurality. So, you can say, las personas, the persons, son, las personas son. So, sí, la gente es, las personas son, la gente es muy insoportable. People are unbearable, you say. Oh, people are unbearable. I don't like humanity, you might say, right? You might be in a negative day. La gente es insoportable. People are unbearable. La gente es insoportable. Now, because you like plurals or plurality, you want to say, las personas son insoportables. Yes? So, son, plural, es singular. Remember that. Now, vosotros and ustedes. Vosotros is only used in Spain. In fact, in some parts of, in most parts of Spain. But there are parts in Spain where they don't say, they don't, Use vosotros as much. But it is for Spain. If you are trying to learn Spanish, to live in Spain, then you can learn it. But if you, your main reason is not to live in Spain, you don't have to. Really, you don't have to. You can use ustedes. Now, even if you want to live in Spain, you can also only learn ustedes. And there is an advantage to it. I'm not saying it because I'm Mexican. I, I want you to speak like, like my people. I want you to make my people even, even if you want to go with the conquerors. No, I'm not saying that because that patriotism. I don't have it. But I'm telling you this because it's easier, really. So. Once I say this, this is for Spain, I'll tell you why it's easier. When you are conjugating a verb and you say, yo camino, tú caminas, I'm not gonna write it all because, well, one, I want to make this lesson brief, and two, I don't feel like it. Yo camino, tú caminas, él, ella y usted camina, ¿sí? These three people, three people, una, dos, tres, camina. El camina, ¿ok? Nosotros y nosotras es lo mismo. It's just the difference in gender, right? Nosotros, nosotras caminamos. Ustedes caminan, ellos caminan, ellas caminan. So I'm just hearing, uh, writing ellos and ellas because it's for women and for men. But it's really one person, right? Ustedes caminan. Ok, nosotros caminamos. So, vosotros, you would say, vosotros camináis. So, forget about that triptongo, double tongo that you have, camináis, the A and the I, camináis, vosotros. You have to learn another conjugation, and quite a complex conjugation, because it has more vowels in the syllable. So, if you only learn ustedes, hmm, you can kill Two birds, let's say, because this is kind of the same. Two birds with one, uh, ¿cómo es? Dos pájaros con un, with one stone. Two birds. Ustedes y ellos o ellas caminan. Then you don't have to learn another conjugation. And this conjugation is actually very simple. And it'll repeat for ustedes, which replaces vosotros in Latin American Spanish. And you can use it too for they, ellos y ellas. So yes, it is up to you. It's not patriotism. And I would like you to learn in a simple way because many of you just want to learn and get going to speak Spanish. So I want to make, I want to get you to speak. And this is a tip to speak faster and with less difficulties. Muy bien. I hope you enjoyed this a 9 ish tips suggestions to improve your Spanish, to improve your pronunciation. Don't forget to sign up to get my newsletter. I call it Dimensions, Dimensiones. And I call it Dimensiones because I speak about many dimensiones of, the, of my language, dimensiones, 
many levels of it, culturally, linguistically, and all the tips and suggestions that I think that would be helpful for you to improve or your, learn your Spanish. So go to my website, butterflyspanish.com and sign up to get mis dimensiones del español. Thank you so much for watching and nos vemos muy pronto con más dimensiones. Adiós.